Despite a year-long conversation about the need to bring competitive integrity back to the NBA's All-Star Game, the 2024 edition proved it was actually possible for the players to care even less than they did in 2023. That's an obvious problem for the association, but not every league issue needs creative or complicated solutions. At some point, it's on the players to just start giving a shit. Look, I'm usually pro player, as many of our disgruntled viewers know from our recent episode about the new game's played minimum for major awards. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. But no one can reasonably defend the embarrassing, annually decreasing level of competition in the NBA's midseason showcase. No one's asking you to dive five rows deep to keep a possession alive, but there's gotta be a middle ground between going balls to the wall and whatever the hell the all-star game product has become. It's not just about the scoring either. Sure, 397 combined points in regulation adds to the circus-like feel, but a team cracking 200 isn't the problem. The scoreline has to do with a changing game and a generation of all-stars who've grown up during the three-point and analytics revolution. Players turning open long twos into threes and just jacking more triples in general is a product of that mathematically sensible revolution. He said somebody ran, ran Dame off a three and he still shot a three. <laughs> and the NBA's overall spike in offense is a topic for another day. But the real all-star problem is that none of the players on the court seemed interested in supplying even an ounce of resistance on any of those shots or any of that movement. Obviously, no one wants to see an unnecessary injury during an exhibition contest, but we're not asking for players to be out there contesting every dunk. Maybe just get into a defensive stance and get a hand up like one out of every two or three possessions? Where are all the Kyle Lowry's, whose two charges drawn late in the 2020 game are some of the most memorable moments in recent All-Star history? Now, you could say no one's tuning into an All-Star game to see a guy taking charges, but the reaction in the Chicago crowd that night? From courtside celebrities to diehards in the nosebleeds to legends on the broadcast said otherwise. And again with a chance to win it with a three. Hard. No foul call, and now we get a call. He has oh, 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 a late call. And, and here's the thing, Frank Vogel can challenge. He can't. They've already used their challenge. <laughs> look at Spud. Oh, look at your guy. <laughs> <laughs> No matter the stakes, that level of energy and competitive fire is infectious and is exactly what today's All-Star festivities are missing. And it's not just on the defensive end. Luka Doncic's ridiculous full-court heave in his second quarter quest for a two-for-one was the perfect embodiment of what All-Star Sunday has devolved into. As Paul George mentioned after last year's defenseless display, no one wants to be the one guy out there hustling, the keener amongst 23 others in cruise control. God forbid a professional athlete stands out for caring too much or being too competitive. That's not cool. Perhaps it's a symptom of these same issues that have plagued the dunk contest. In the age of social media and trolling, marquee stars seem to think they have more to lose by showing up, competing, and potentially failing in an all-star setting than they do by showing us they don't care. We all know that for players, the all-star break is supposed to be a reprieve from the grind of the regular season, and that the game itself is for sponsors, media partners, the host city, and kids, among others. More of a spectacle than it is about the purity of the game. But it's also supposed to be a celebration of that game, and of the world's foremost basketball league. The NBA can no longer say its all-star game is representative of that, not even after a full year of the commissioner, various legends, and players saying 2024 would be different. Instead, we had one of the future faces of the league saying this. It's a break, so I don't think nobody wanna come here and compete. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Adam Silver seemed hilariously less than enthused after what he had witnessed from the league's 24 best players. And to the Eastern Conference All-Stars, you scored the most points. Well, congratulations. The conversation now has once again turned to what the league can do to fix the annual event. Some say bring back the target score and Elam ending. Others see value in an NHL-style mini-tournament, perhaps even in a three-on-three -three format. A USA versus the world format sounds good in theory, but it would prevent the best 24 from making it. 
Some might say the NBA should provide more of a financial incentive for players, just like the league did for the in-season tournament. But it's not like All-Stars are doing this for free right now or sacrificing their break. It may be pocket change to stars making tens of millions per year, but there is still an extra 75 grand per player on the line in the game itself. And the NBA's All-Star break has been a full week long for a decade now. So even All-Stars get at least a few days off before the regular season resumes. There's just not much of an excuse for what we've witnessed. And it can't always be on the league office to come up with a creative solution or new incentive. At some point, the world's best ballers just need to suck it up and find their competitive pride. I promise you, you can care about winning the All-Star game. You can take it seriously for at least some parts of the night and still be cool. Hopefully the best players of today realize that at some point over the next year. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.